fine. Uh, here's a review. I'm going to do a book review today on the The Light Between Oceans, The Light Between Oceans, um, by M. L. Stedman. Uh, first of all, the book backstory. I signed up for three book clubs this month because I'm a crazy person. So I had to read two books really, really fast, and the other one is just kind of a continuated sort of a thing, so I'm just going to read that one next, but oh my goodness, so much reading, the first, last week of January, first week of February. So, I was very proud of me for getting through this book as fast as I did, and it was good, and it was, that was the best part, was I was so, I was so happy that it was actually really good, because it's not really a book that I normally read. I got on Goodreads and looked at some of the stuff on Goodreads, because that's my favorite thing to do is look on good, Goodreads, and one of my friends had read it, so I was like, oh, so obviously it's not super suck balls, so that was good. So, I read the book, and it was good, it was really good. It was not, it was not a happy book, not a happy book, and so that was hard, because I'm not used to reading, like, sad books. There were, there were fun parts of the book, there were very sad parts of the book, there were, um, morals in the book that I think a lot of people probably should read and, like, think about, because there's, like, the big hard questions, like, what would you do if you were in this situation, or what would you do if you had this happen to you, or how would you feel if something like this happened? Um, so, you know, the general gist of the book is, um, Tom and his wife, Isabel, uh, live on this lighthouse, he's the lightkeeper, um, he meets her, and she gets married to him really young, so she's out there for, you know, three or four years, I think is what it is, maybe. Um, and she, they're trying to have a baby, and she miscarries twice, and then she has a stillbirth, um, and just super upset about it. And I mean, that would be horrible. Like, how horrible would that be if all you wanted your entire life was to have kids and you couldn't have kids? That would be horrible. Um... But so the one day, like right after she has her stillbirth, they find this baby and this um, man who had passed away in a boat that washes up on the lighthouse. So Tom is kind of the meticulous, I have to write everything down, I have to record everything, because that's his job, he has to record everything for the lighthouse. Um, so he, he wants to report the baby washed ashore, you know, like you do. And Isabel's like, no, 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 it's okay, we can do it tomorrow. And you can immediately tell that she wants to keep the baby, and it's just, it's really, it's a really hard decision, and what do you, would you do if your wife was in the middle of the stillbirth happening, and then she finds this baby, and you, all you want to do is make her happy, and blah, 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 blah. So, I don't want to do spoilers, I'm really bad about giving away stuff, so I'm going to try not to do spoilers, but it's just... They make this decision, and it just affects everybody in their entire life. It affects everybody that lives in this tiny little town that Isabel is from. And it's just the whole time, I'm, the more, the farther into the book I got, the, le the less I enjoyed Isabel. Like, I was not an Isabel fan at all. Like, I was much more a Tom fan. I was on Team Tom. Um, simply because it was just, she was being very selfish, and, and she needed to think about other people as opposed to just herself and that kind of thing. So, if you read the book, I'd really be interested to find out, you know, how you felt about Isabel and, Isabel and the decisions that she makes and how you felt Tom, you know, felt, you know, how he dealt with the situation because he could have done a better job dealing with the situation, too. You know, like, sometimes making people happy all the time isn't the right decision. So, lots of moral issues in this book. It was a beautifully written book, and that's what I think helped me get through it as fast as I did. Um, it's set in Australia, and so it's really fun to listen to, like, their accents, even though it's just written on the page. Um, and so, and, and just... I love this kind of book where I just feel like, oh, well, I know that place. I totally know what that place looks like, and I know what that place smells like, and blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't overly descriptive, but it was descriptive just enough that you got that sense of where they were. 
Um, but then there was still a lot of the action and a lot of dialogue and, you know, that kind of thing. Because um, when I first started thinking about it, I was like, oh, they're going to be on this island. It's just going to be those two. There's not going to be anything going on. But there was it was a lot more than just them being on the island with the lighthouse. Um, but yeah, so if you read the book, I hope you enjoy the book. If you have read the book, you know, comment below or comment on my blog. Um, I'll write up some, some notes on the blog as well. And if you like the video book reviews, let me know and I'll try and do some more of them. I'm trying to do videos this month, so I'm just kind of trying out what kind of videos I'd like to do and what might fit my personality and work best for the blog and that kind of thing. So, um, okay, so thanks. I'll see you guys later. Bye.